everyone, it's Jeannie again, and I thought today I would bring you a sort of a back to basics card tutorial. Um, my brother um, asked me to make him some, asked if I would help him make some Christmas cards, and so yesterday I pulled out some items that I thought I might want to use, and um, he was going to come over and help me, and I like to have a basic design. When my family asks me to make something for them, I like to have a basic design because if we're start, starting from scratch and all the stuff I have in my room, it can take forever. So um, I knew I wanted to use the, um, just show you what I used. I used the um, homemade Christmas stack that I got. I had gotten this a few weeks back and I had been really wanting to play with it. And then I also used um, the this uh, Martha Stewart clear gift tag stamps and I ended up using one of the snowflakes and the one that says happy holiday on it and I actually think I got these on clearance last year I may have even gotten them at Big Lots I'm not sure but this is actually the first time I've used them but um, anyway so I also had some pre-made um, craft cards that I got at um, Hobby Lobby a while back and I think it was like 50 cards for um, Oh, they were really cheap, but they might have even been on clearance. But you can see, I don't know if you'll be, you guys will be able to see on here, but they're, they were already scored and folded, and they come with these um, craft envelopes. Actually, the envelopes are very nice, but the cards are not, maybe they were on clearance because the cards were not scored very well. They're not perfectly folded, and I tried refolding them, and I can't get it to do it. So anyway, but I thought, you know, these are handmade kind of country-themed Christmas cards, and so why not? So what? They're a little bit off fully. It kind of, I think, adds to the charm. So anyway, this is what I came up with. And um, again, this is a really, really basic card. But I have to say, I've been, um, sometimes I forget how much fun it is just to do something that's just really basic and easy. And I think there are a lot of people out there that get intimidated by, um, you know, these these beautiful works of art that they see everybody do and really you can make something really cute and really fun um, with minimal supplies and minimal techniques and so that's kind of what I, I just really I ended up putting this card together and then I whipped out like seven of them and um, he needed six and so I and they were just I just ended, ended up having them all made by the time my brother got here because they were just they just came together so easily so um, anyway and it just were really fun to make and with this really pretty glittery printed paper and stuff there's just nothing to it so um, I thought I would kind of get back to basics and um, I, I, I do fall into that trap where sometimes I think everything I make has to be a masterpiece and um, then I'll go ahead and throw something together that's simple and easy and I sometimes I'm just surprised at how happy I am with the results so anyway this card is basically pattern paper at the bottom um, I did use some white embossing at the top and um, I'll do that for you in this little tutorial and then but you could easily if you're even someone who doesn't want to go to the trouble of wet or heat embossing you could easily use either leave this blank up here or use a um, another pattern paper um, you know and just just paper piece it you wouldn't even have to do any stamping or embossing if you didn't want to um, this is another piece of the pattern paper that I just used my my uh, Stampin' Up Scallop Circle Punch and then this ribbon, um, this is an also kind of an easy back, easy back to basics sort of um, method is, in fact, I, you guys, I love this ribbon, this ribbon, excuse me, I can't talk. Um, I've had this ribbon for years. You can see I'm kind of at the end of my spool, um, but I love it because it is double sided. And this is a great for you beginners out there or just people who have difficulty tying nice bows or knots. Um, there's a lot of good tutorials out there, so I recommend um, looking at those, uh, Christina Warner's tutorials for bows and knots are, is really good. Um, but if you are one that has difficulty doing that, and I cannot tie a pretty one every time, um, then uh, I recommend getting the two-sided ribbon because it's it's very um, forgiving. Because even if your ribbon's twisted a little bit, or anyway, they usually come out decent. So anyway, so just a little bit of ribbon there, and that's it. I didn't, I haven't put a sentiment in or anything, but let me show you how I put this together, and you guys, you know, I haven't done a ton of tutorials because I'm, I am, um, stuck, kind of stuck with my laptop here, um, and so I can't really move the camera around, so, um, I, some of these things I did ahead of time, and other things I have not done yet, so, um, 
I'm going to see how this goes and we'll see if I don't run out of time. But anyway, start with your um, basic folded card and anybody who doesn't know, you can have a standard size card if you cut an 8.5 by 11 inch piece of paper in half the long way and then score it and fold it in half, you get a standard size note card. And the first thing I'm going to do is just your basic um, stamping and embossing. Um, most of you know how to do this, but if you're a beginner, I'll show you. Um, this is Versamark ink. It's a watermark ink pad, and basically it's a sticky clear ink. And um, all you do is you just stamp with it like you normally would. Now on this card, I'm just going to stamp the, um, the probably the top half of the card. And I'm going to do what I call random stamping where I am going to stamp some full images, but I'm going to stamp some of them also off the card because I just think that gives it a nice finished look. So I'm going to go ahead and do my stamping and then I'll show it to you. But um, most of you may know that with um, with uh, this watermark ink, you can't see it very well, um, generally speaking, because it's clear. Um, but it does make a little bit of a shadow on the craft paper. So I'll be able to show it to you here in a second. Get a few of these done. And um, you, some of you may want to open your card. Um, makes it a little less bouncy. I have um, some cardboard under my mat here um, just to make it a little bit softer. I find with a, a little bit of a softer um, surface, you get a better stamped image. Um, and I'm, I'm by no means a like professional stamper. Um, I enjoy it. I play around with it, but I'm not anywhere near, you know, some people's level. So basically, so let's see if you can see that a little bit. I've got the little stamped images there. Move that out of the way and then I'm just going to use this little thing to catch my white embossing powder. And embossing powder, you just sprinkle it on and it will stick to that sticky ink and I'll show you here. You'll be able to see this in a minute. And I just happen to love white on craft. It is one of my favorite combinations. Um, just love it. I love the way it looks. I like gold on craft too, but um, I just think white on craft is just really fun. And it's it goes really nicely with this country, kind of country look that this paper um, sort of affords. Throw this back in here. You guys, I've had this little pot of white embossing powder for years years, 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 and I, I use it fairly regularly, and it seems like it's still like practically full. So anyway, now you can see that they, you can see the white snowflakes on there, and um, this has a few little places where um, there's a, some stray embossing pattern. I'm not going to worry about that so much with this country card, um, but you can always take a soft paintbrush and get the little extra off of there if you want to. I don't happen to mind the extra little white dots on it. But I'm going to just um, take a second and heat emboss these and they'll turn even a brighter white. So let me do that for you real quick. Sorry about the noise. I'm going to let my heat gun heat up here. How well you can see that. There you go. Got the nice white, and then there's, like I said, there's a few little splotch splotches on there, but I just, I love embossing powder, you guys. It's like magic. I just love the way it gets kind of raised and plasticky, and it just looks really professional, I think. So, anyway, so that is the embossed part. And then what I'm going to do is um, take my pattern paper, which I already cut, and this is cut to 3 by 4 which fits the, um, the front bottom of my card here. And... I am going to just use my ATG gun, maybe, and see if I can get this, oh come on, I think I have a, a roll of tape that's not too, there it goes, I have a roll of tape that's kind of wonky, and so I've been fighting with it, um, but it, it works from time to time, so I think I, I need a new roll of tape. I hate to waste it, you know? So anyway, so I'm just going to line this up at the very bottom and side edge of the card. And 
just glue that down just like that and it is um, hanging over the edge just a hair so I'm gonna take my scissors and oh, these are the, let me excuse my reach um, I don't like to get glue on these ones so these are my I need to get some of the Tim Holtz ones but I haven't done that yet I'm just gonna cut off the excess here so there you have it, okay. And then um, the other portion of this card that's embossed, I've actually already done the embossing here, but I just wanted to give you also another kind of beginner's tip that if you want to um, have a stamped image in a shape, if you can, especially if you're using a punch or even a, um, a, die, a die cutter of some sort, if you wanna punch it first, it's much easier to line up um, where you're going to punch it out than to try to punch this little or try to stamp this little bitty small shape. So I don't know if sideways here I can show you this, but um, basically you can line it up after you punch it and it, may, it just makes it easier to kind of get it centered and um, rather than trying to, to center something on this little bitty piece. So just FYI on that, I find that much easier to do. So just use, I love my Stampin' Up! punches. I don't have very many, but I'm hoping to invest in some more. And then, um, so this is ready to go, but I'm gonna put, go ahead and put my ribbon on first. And again, here's my double-sided ribbon. And I think I'm gonna use the red and white here. And then this little, this is a method that I learned also from Christina Werner on tying the ribbon on. And basically what she does is she takes a little snip. This is the spine side of the card. And she just takes a little snip out of the spine where she wants her ribbon to go. I'm gonna do that real quick. So if I show it to you on the inside, you can see there's a little slit there. And then you can put your ribbon through the slit. And it does leave uh, um, a line of ribbon on the inside of the card, but I think that that ends up looking cute on the inside and you can also like tuck a gift card in it or, you know, various things. So there's different things you can do with the, or tuck a little note in there or whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and snip this and try to tie a, sorry I'm off camera, try to tie a decent bow. Um, like I said, I'm not a super duper good bow tire and I, you know, so every now and then I get a really good one and then I, like, how did I do that? So anyway. relatively okay just for demonstration purposes uh, see, no, that's not so good it's not tight enough let me try again guys sorry sorry I'm off camera like I said I'm not uh, too great at these tutorials I really need to get probably a different camera set up but there that's a little bit better so there's a little little bow. I'm just going to snip the ends here. I waste a lot of ribbon too because I need a lot, I need my tails to be pretty long in order to get a decent bow. So there we go. And the nice thing about this method too is that you can, you can actually slide it if it's not quite where you want it. You can, it's just a loop of ribbon so you can, and it's not glued down so you can slide it around. So there's that. And then I'm just going to add the little Happy Holiday Medallion. And basically I'm going to use pop dots for this. And so I want to make sure my pop dot is on the top and the bottom so that I can kind of straddle the ribbon. So I just have these little um, square pop dots. So I'm just going to use two. Like so. Peel those off. I'm going to line it up here. And there you have it, a really cute and simple card. I mean, you could bling this up if you wanted to. You could add a sentiment to the inside. Um, again, like I said, you can tuck a, a, no, a, hand, a little handwritten note or a gift card down on the side. Really cute and fun. So I hope that you guys will give it a try and that you will kind of be inspired to kind of go back to the basics of your supplies and um, see what you can come up with that, that um, 
is something that you'll be happy with, but something that you can kind of mass produce and, and that you'll enjoy sending out. So I hope y'all are having a great day. I have a little haul for y'all. I'll tape that next. Take care, guys. Bye.